Um, I'm now standing here amongst um, the tombstones. Some of them are tombs, as in monumental monuments, and some of them are standing. But we have to remember that there are graves here that go back centuries, and in many cases the, they are they are legible. Um, if you look up the records um, of St Mary's graveyard, you will be able to uh, see who is buried here and where. And that's why I leave this, the next one I'm going to say, as a little puzzle. I'm standing quite near now to uh, one of the two um, actors in the real-life drama of Art Clamell's Romeo and Juliet. There is a, a Quaker girl by the name of Anna Grubb, who is buried over in the graveyard, not uh, 200 yards from here, uh, as you head west through the gates and onto O'Neill Street, in the Quaker graveyard that's there. Um, that's there from the late 1700s. And the second character would be, who was an army man, who was a young man, uh, Lieutenant Close, and he is buried in one of the tombs here. Now, um, I leave it to yourselves to locate that tomb, either by going online or checking out the records of Old St. Mary's Parish Church. You can also find information, say for example, in books by uh, our noted uh, local author, Michael Ahern, an historian, and in one of his books, particularly maybe the figures in the, Nairi, in the Clonmel landscape. Um, the records of the Nationalist and the earlier newspapers uh, can be seen online, but there's a small fee. So, be familiar with these methods of, if you like, sourcing exactly where, in fact, Lieutenant closes. Anyway, one of the stories we had when we were kids was that, um, um, well, I'll give you the facts insofar as they are known, uh, first of all. Um, Lieutenant Close would have been of the Church of Ireland or Angl Anglican persuasion, whereas Anna Grubb was a member of the Society of Friends and would have been one of the uh, daughters of the very well-known Grubb family that lived here and lived in the surrounding countryside and had a huge influence impact, and impact on the, um, we said the commercial life of Clonmel and made a huge contribution uh, to the commercial life of Clonmel from the 1700s onwards. Um, so, um, they, they had met each other. How they had met each other? Any man's guess. How do young people meet? So in those days, either out on a walk or down by the river or whatever. But anyway, they got to know each other and they got to feel for each other and they got to love each other. Um, but their liaison, if you like, even at that level, would have been frowned upon, uh, particularly by the... Um, uh, we said the Anna's um, uh, Quaker friends or family simply because of the fact that um, the Anglicans, even though they were Protestants and that, um, uh, would have been considered, they weren't members of the society and so they were very protective of their own members, male and female, uh, the society was. So. They used meat clandestinely, that is, on the QT, and um, on one occasion, during the height of um, uh, winter, as far as I recall, um, they were down by the gas house bridge, and you can walk there after here, if you like, retrace their steps. And the river was up like it is now, but in flood somewhat. And of course it was at that time unprotected, as in there were no railings there. So you just walked on to the riverside, uh, the bank side, and um, so it was open in other words. Anyway, they ended up in the river. How? Did one of them stumble? Did one of them fall? And the other go to, the, uh, to try to rescue um, the other? Whatever happened, they were both swept away and um, uh, both drowned. And it was some time later, um, um, one body was found first and then the second body. And Lieutenant Close was buried here um, 
Um, he was a soldier, a lieutenant in the barracks, which had been Queen Victoria Barracks in our time, Keekham Barracks, and now no more. And uh, whereas Anna was uh, to be buried in the Quaker graveyard. Um, a tragic story of young love and a tragic ending. Um, no one knows what happened. And so it's one of, it's a mystery uh, in respect. But anyway, as kids, we had the story that uh, around this time of year, November being the month of souls, when according to Irish tradition anyway, the dead who are in the ground, they walk among us again. We're all familiar with the idea of the dead walking among us in the realm of memory, uh, or even memento, things that we hold dear uh, from, their, from them or their time. And, um, at midnight on uh, Halloween night, so it's over now, so you don't have to be worried. You can come in here any day and you won't feel scared. Uh, so um, the gates would be closed, of course, and it would be pitch dark, as only November can be, uh, especially as you get late into November, as we are now, that Anna would rise from her grave and she would walk the short distance over to the gateway. And himself, left and in close, would also rise from his grave and he would walk the short distance to the gate from this side and they would meet at the gate and not a word said just what had been their eyes they would look longingly lovingly at each other and then they would each return to their eternal place of rest <laughs>